Hey, I'm Dave. This is Other People's Beer, where we are raising quality of beer by lowering the barrier to entry. Uh, over the next few weeks or so, probably, maybe longer, uh, I'm going to I'm going to try and walk through building a new controller for an electric brewing system. And this comes after years and years of me using a gas-fired system using propane and some burners. I kind of got tired of not having as much control as I want. And yes, there are there are systems out there. I think specifically the ebrewshop.com has, or electric brewing something. I'll put it down in the show notes. Anyway, they have one where you can have a PID control of the, the, the gas burners and whatnot. But looking at all of the, the PID controllers on the market for a, a 30 amp system, which is what I'm looking at uh, building, it pretty pricey. Uh, so I decided to build my own, which is also pretty pricey. Uh, it comes down to the only reason I was really able to do this is because I got a very, very good deal uh, on some used equipment. Um, and unfortunately, some of that used equipment ended up being what you may or may, or is my camera, which you may or may not have seen on our Instagram. Uh, this is a solid state relay. Uh, it, this controls your, well, this turns on the heating elements inside your brew kettle or your uh, your liquor tank or you know, wherever you have it. Uh, and they should not be melted this way. Probably why I get a good deal on it. <clears throat> but what I've done from there uh, is I took all that apart. And I'm sorry, I forgot to get some pictures. I didn't even think about documenting this until I had everything uh, tore apart. Uh, I'm looking down at my workbench because fondly looking at all the stuff that I have laid out. Tore all that, all that apart and from there, I started doing some research and I would like to share, I guess, the benefits of my research with you. So I guess buckle up, it's gonna be a ride. Okay, let's get started. Um, for the first bit, this could be me talking. Um, hopefully this helps uh, solve some problems, answer some questions for you. Uh, which size brewing controller is right for you? Um, initially, I, I thought that I would want a big 50 amp control panel to be able to do back to back batches, meaning I could have two, not four, two, two elements inside my brewing system over there uh, on at the same time. However, my kettles are 20 gallons and you fill all those beasties all the way up, you get 10 gallons of beer, which is my normal brew day anyway. So as of right now, uh, I decided to go down to down step to a 30 amp control panel. And this saves a bit of money. Um, it saves a bit of a bit of uh, wiring and uh, you know layout and the components. There's there are some definite differences, um, but there's I mean the capability I think for what most home brewers uh, are doing is is a, it's about equivalent. Um, so if you're interested in a 50 amp panel or doing a little bit more of your own research. Uh, the key, the key places I looked for research were, were the electricbrewery.com and the folks over there, uh, they have an amazing product, uh, very, very good step by step, by step uh, uh, procedure, schematics, everything that you would need, um, and a whole lot of information, a whole lot of uh, details on, on why the components were chosen. They also have a very good uh, store where you can either buy their complete DIY kits, uh, ranging anywhere from, oh, around $1,000 up to like three, I think. Um, the other place I looked was uh, ebrewsupply.com, I believe. I'll, I'll correct all this stuff and editing and in the notes and whatever, um, if I'm wrong. I might be wrong, probably wrong. Uh, but I looked on there um, they had a lot of really good information. And it, it, as a matter of fact, that's where I'm modeling my, what I'm modeling my control panel off of is <clears throat> all of their schematics, all of their, their parts list and everything like that. Um, another one was short circuited brewers on YouTube um, or short circuited brewing on YouTube. Uh, he's got a lot of really useful information, a lot of really useful um, DIY uh, walkthroughs and stuff like that. So there's a lot of resources out there, not just this video, um, and I'm not affiliated with it. Uh, well, Mark and I are not affiliated with pretty much anybody. So it's good information because it's not paid for. 
Um, the next question that you have to ask yourself is like, not only what size panel do I want, but <clears throat> do I have the capability of doing a, or building a DIY panel? And sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, for instance, I'm by trade, I'm a mechanical engineer, but I, I build, I build a lot of tooling uh, in my job. So with that, I, there's a certain level of skills, right? Uh, I know how to solder. I know how to poke holes in metal. I know the basics about wiring. I know that current will kill you, so be careful. Uh, so I know enough to be careful um, rather than just dangerous. <clears throat> there are a lot of prefab options out there, pre-built options. I've heard uh, there's a podcast I listen to called Double Hop Beat. Uh, they have a, I believe it's a spike three vessel system and they speak very highly of it. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit expensive for my taste. Uh, I know the SS Brutech has, has a really good system. Again, it's, it's a lot more expensive than I could, I could afford, but really good systems out there. Um, I mean, there's the Grainfather, all sorts of, all sorts of other non DIY um, projects or systems. So really the question you have to ask is how much do I want to learn? How much do I already know? And how, how much do I trust myself with doing something right? I've done a lot of research. Um, I've talked to a bunch of folks at work. What I'm hopefully gonna share with you is are the fruits of, of, of that labor. Next thing we need to talk about <clears throat> is what the control panel does and why we're using it. If you think about a brewing system, you have the goal really is to get water hot or to get your wort hot or to do temperature controlling things. So inside your brewing system, you will have heating elements. And those, those are the central part of this brewing system. And my brewing system uses uh, two 5,500 watt uh, ripple heating elements, uh, the UHL or ultra hot or ultra low watt density which I think is the, the preferred version of these. Um, you can look all over the world. I think I've got some Camco 2062s, I think is what they're called. Each of those run, they produce 5,500 watts of power and they use 220 volts, 240 volts, somewhere on there. And that comes out to uh, 22 or so amps. Let's round it up to 23 because you always wanna be safe when you're doing electricity. So it comes out to about 23 amps of current that each one of these burners pulls through. Here's where we come into whether or not we would use a 50 amp system versus a 30 amp system. So if we're trying to run both burner, both up, if we're trying to run um, two heating elements at the same time, that is 23 amps plus 23 amps, 46 amps. So a 50 amp breaker, we should be very well protected, right? If anything happens inside of there, the, the breaker is gonna trip. But with a 30 amp system, or with only running one, one element at, the, at a time, you only need a 30 amp system because it's 24 amps plus a little bit of wiggle room, you get, you know, the 30 amp breaker will protect you. Now, speaking of breakers, um, what I have over there is my electric panel. And inside my electric panel, I have, I have a two pole 50 amp breaker so I can run my 220 volts out of it. Originally I put that in because I was thinking I was gonna run, again, a two element system, back to back batches. Uh, I don't need that. Uh, so I, but I still have a 50 amp two pole breaker. Now, something that I didn't realize until I was about a couple hundred dollars deep into this project um, and until after my outlet was installed, is that you need a GFCI, a ground fault current interrupting breaker. Now, these are kind of expensive. They are about $100 each for just the breaker and you have to wire it up inside your panel. Um, so I, I recommend, and what I did is I had an electrician install my, uh, my 220 outlet as well as my new breaker because electricity will kill you uh, if you're not careful. And again, I don't like it. I didn't have my electrician install or a GFCI breaker. Um, and basically the GFCI is there to protect you, the operator, not so much the equipment. So within a couple milliseconds, if during a voltage excursion, the, the GFCI will trip protecting you from that massive amount of current. Whereas a normal breaker will, takes a little bit longer to trip to protect your equipment. So absolutely necessary to have a GFCI breaker. Uh, what I did and what I've done is I went to my local big box store and I bought a spa panel. 
So this spa panel breakout breaker box that is prefabricated. This is a, about $115 uh, at my big box store, which is still very expensive. It is, other than like the kettles, it is, and possibly your, your, your control panel box, it is the most expensive thing in this entire build, uh, but it is absolutely worth it. Anything to keep you safe, absolutely worth it. Spare no expense, as uh, John Hammond would say. So I've got I've got the the spa panel with a 50 amp GFCI breaker into it. So all I'm going to do for there is I'm going to connect that G, the that spa panel to my 220 outlet and then my control box to the spa panel. So um, keeps me safe, keeps the equipment safe, um, and if I move, I don't have to worry about putting another a GFCI breaker into another box. I can just run it off a a standard 220 outlet. Continuing with the component uh, component aspect of this, uh, and again, not a whole lot happening in this in this version, or I'm sorry, this uh, this episode. Uh, it's just going to be me talking and showing some pictures um, because I really, really want to impress upon you how expensive this can get if you don't plan ahead. Because um, the worst thing than doing work is doing work twice when you're buying and when you're sourcing your components. Again, if you look online at those resources that are in my uh, show notes, they have very good equipment and very good links and everything will point you to exactly what you need, especially uh, the electric brewery. They have, they have their affiliate links, click on them, they get some money, that's fine and dandy. Um, but you wanna match your voltages and your currents for all of your components inside your uh, your control panel. Your elements, as we've already talked, your heating elements already run on 200, they run on 220 volts and uh, let's call it 30 amps a piece. So everything that is associated with those, you need to make sure that they'll handle that 220 volts. So for instance, what I have here is just a uh, 22 millimeter indicator light. This one um, is the wrong size. It, it, trust me, it's 110 volts. If I hook this up, my element circuit, it would melt. Right? We don't want it to melt, um, or it wouldn't function properly, or it would cause problems and potentially hurt me. And I like me, so don't do it. This, this is something that I had to had to watch out for. I have from my original kit. I have these much smaller 220 volt lights, but. I wanted things to be uniform, so I had to go out and I had to buy um, same ones, uh, same style, and the same size, because these are 16 millimeter um, as my other lights. The other thing is you, if at all possible, and if your, your funds allow, I highly recommend getting the same temperature controllers. They're about, I have, I bought this Inkbird temperature controller. It's about 20, 20 bucks or so. Uh, 40 or if it if you buy it with the heat sink and a solid state relay which you need two solid state relays anyway might as well um, and then everything else just as make please 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 make sure that it is rated for the 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 voltage and the current that you're trying to put through it for instance your pumps are going to run on 120 volts and about 15 amps or so if they're the standard chugger pumps and again do your own research make sure that you are you are comfortable doing all of this wiring and all of the setup because if not things could go badly really quickly so i'm not an electrician not licensed in any way i'm gonna put this at the beginning of every episode but be safe whatever you do don't just do something because dave told you to don't do something because dave said hey this works do something because you've done your research and you're gonna make sure that you're not gonna hurt yourself um, and also you could start a fire and burn your house down, which is not cool because that's where you live. So don't. The pumps, or I'm sorry, the switches and the indicator lights, you can get them fairly cheap on you know, the online stores. Uh, again, if you use the affiliate links in um, some of those resources that I mentioned, they get some money, I get nothing. Doesn't matter to me. I wanna keep you guys safe. The next thing that we wanna talk about and make sure that we have on hand um, is, are our tools. Uh, basic hand tools should be should be good enough. Um, a set of wire strippers, a uh, set of you know, needleless pliers, set of normal pliers, screwdrivers. Um, when it comes to poking holes into your project box, uh, depending on the material that you're using, you might want to have uh, different types of bits. For instance, I'm using a stainless steel enclosure. It's about an eighth inch thick, which is excessive. I will admit. 
Anytime that I'm using a specialty tool, which you may not have, I'll try and give you an option for using a non-specialty tool. So with that, uh, let's get into actually setting this thing up and laying it out and figuring out what we want to do and where we want to put it. I'll try and give you some pointers that I've learned through my, through my um, research and hopefully, hopefully I help somebody. So let's get going. Before we get too much further, I want to talk about a good schematic. Um, I downloaded these from the Electric Brewing Supply website. They are fantastic, so fantastic, I laminated them. Um, but it will show you the layout of both inside your box and inside the door of your control panel. What I'm gonna work on first is gonna be down here. I'm going to work on the power inlet, the liquor tank and the boil kettle uh, powers, as well as the pump, uh, warp pump and the water pump uh, inlets. For my system, based on the limitations of what I already had before I started this endeavor, my pump one and my pump two, my warp pump and my water pump, I'm gonna have a pigtail, which is a, a length of cord coming down from the control panel so that I can connect it to my existing cords on the pumps because I really didn't feel like rewiring all of that stuff. My liquor tank and my boil kettle, um, I'm going to be using a standard 30 amp uh, outlet that came with my my second hand controller. Um, both of these are not damaged um, and both of them seem to be in good working order. I did a continuity test and all that business. Works well. Um, my inlet, my power inlet, as I, I think I said before, I'm going to be using a spa panel uh, as my GFCI circuit. So the inlet, the power inlet is going to come from this, uh, this box to the spa panel GFCI. And then from there, it's going to connect into my 220 outlet uh, right by my, bra uh, my breaker box. So first thing I did, um, and I got, I jumped the gun a little bit because <clears throat> I knew I was going to, to, to do this, this how-to, but I was really excited. So I've already installed one of my burner elements and I'm going to install the next one. I've already poked holes in this using a hydraulic press. You can use a, um, a stepper bit. You can use a hole saw. I just, again, I'm using a, an eighth inch stainless steel enclosure. And that is, that's a lot to, to ask of a stepper bit or a hole saw. Um, again, you don't have to use an eighth inch stainless steel enclosure. It's what I had, it's what I got. The problem, however, is that it's not a very, very tight fit. And we want all of our fittings to be snug uh, because we don't want any dust or debris or anything that causes short to get into our control panel. So what I've done is I modeled up a bushing that uh, that will fit around the outlet, uh, the outlet hole, as well as fit nice and snug into the control panel. Uh, and I printed it up on uh, my 3D printer with PETG. If you don't have a 3D printer, that's completely understandable. Um, there are services where you can print um, or you can request people to print designs. I'm gonna put these bushings up onto Thingiverse. If you run into a similar problem, you'll have this capability as well. So now we have both of the outlets installed. Again, I got a little excited earlier uh, before I started recording. I installed the power and the pump uh, inlets and outlet uh, electrical parts. Um, I mean, it's that little little blue right on the outside of the. It is stronger and more durable than than PLA, which don't get me started on 3D printing. We'll talk about that all day. Next thing we want to do is we want to determine the layout of all of the components inside the control panel. And to do that, we need to first understand how the interior components of the control panel are going to play and impact the door panel components. So for that, We'll do a cutaway to the schematic. Once again, we're looking at the uh, the wiring diagram and schematic from it's upside down from the Electric Brewing, Brewing Supply Company. Uh, I really like this schematic. One more time, 
because not only does it show you the wiring diagram and roughly you can kind of guess what gauges uh, you're going to be used, but it shows the layout of the components inside the box as opposed to some of the other schematics I've seen where it is just, hey, connect it here, connect it here, connect it here, right? So for this project, we're going to be using some Phoenix connectors as our terminal blocks and we're going to be connecting the, everything inside the panel. We're going to be connecting to the back plate using DIN connectors. I have no idea what DIN stands for, but it reminds me of a genie. So, but that's gin. Not to be considered confused with the delicious beverage. Anyway, we're going to lay everything out roughly on the panel, and I'll get that set up here uh, momentarily. But again, this schematic from the Electric Brewing Supply Company is... Uh, it's fantastic, and I highly recommend that you, uh, if you're thinking about doing this build, you follow their their example. So the first thing right off the bat, uh, kind of a little disclaimer here, is I'm using a bunch of mix and match parts because, again, my friend had this control panel that was drastically the wrong size, and he bought, overbought a bunch of stuff for this is a recycled project. Um, I did end up buying some 10 gang DIN connectors here. Um, on some uh, some Phoenix contactors on the DIN rails, uh, as well as the breakers that I'm going to be installing later. They came on the DIN rails themselves. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys in fast forward mode, and I'm going to start poking holes or I'm going to start doing a layout, uh, and we'll see you when this is connected. According to the schematic, the large, the DIN rail, the bus box, or the bus bars down here need to go close to the bottom, close to the outlets. And then up top is where we have our, uh, our three breakers, two of our relays, and our safety interlock switch. <clears throat> and then over on the hinge side, because uh, I'm envisioning the door opening this way, uh, on the hinge side is where we have our um, our power relay as well as our power bus. Um, so this is where our, right? So if we look at our inlet, the green wire, the green line is gonna be our green wire, which is our ground. And that's gonna go up and it's gonna connect to our ground bus, right? And then the next thing is this little itty bitty thin one, that's gonna be our neutral wire. And the way that a neutral, the neutral was explained to me is that's the, the buffer. So if you're pulling a little bit uh, too much out of your hot A or your hot B, this neutral wire flows back into the circuit as opposed to overloading and melting up your wires. So that one, <clears throat> that neutral wire is gonna come over here to the neutral bus. And then our hot A, which is for now the black one, is gonna come up through our relay <clears throat> and then to our hot, uh, hot A bus. And our hot B is gonna come up through our relay and then to our hot B bus. Thing we're going to do is we're going to follow our schematic and we're oh geez got snagged on the thing uh we're going to follow the schematic and we're going to start putting all of our buses and relays and breakers and whatnot into place plate for the panel. 
ready to wire. And we will do probably the front plate in the next set of videos. All right, until next time, I'm Dave. Mark's over there. There's other people's beer.